Okay. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to um, the Street Smart New Jersey uh, check-in meeting and, and uh, evaluation toolkit training webinar. Um, I'd like to uh, thank everybody for joining and everybody that's on the line right now, participants and campaign partners, um, for helping to uh, really put a lot of work into preparing and collaborating for um, a March campaign. The campaign has officially begun. We had a regional kickoff meeting yesterday in the city of Elizabeth that was very successful. We had a great turnout, lots of good speakers to um, engage the audience, and there was um, a lot of good media uh, as a follow-up. I saw a few stories online and, and on, on TV news and articles, so uh, we're getting the word out. That's a great start, and I just want to thank everyone for that. Um, so as you know, uh, as part campaign partners, this is uh, Street Smartest Public Education Awareness and Behavioral Change Campaign. Um, and it combines grassroots public awareness efforts, education with law enforcement, and as well as some uh, paid advertising to, um, and comb combining all of those factors really makes this a, uh, a worthwhile campaign to address the pedestrian safe safety in the state of New Jersey. As you know, uh, NJ, New Jersey is a, a focus state due to the high incidence of crashes resulting in pedestrian injuries and, and fatalities. So um, this campaign really combines those three factors. It's uh, the three E's of ed education enforcement, um, and we're going to be looking at evaluation today as well. So let me start the slideshow here. Today, um, we're going to, well, we have um, 12 communities participating in the phase two of Street Smart New Jersey. Um, here on the screen, you can see the first five in phase one are in green, and we've added seven for phase two. So we're looking to build on the successes of the first phase of the campaign and really take it statewide. Um, all of these communities have shown a uh, a need to reduce pedestrian incidents, and they've also shown a willingness to participate in the campaign. Um, so we've been working with each of you to try to reach out to the, place, to the people in the places where you live and work. And as you know from our preparation so far, there's a lot of moving parts to this campaign. This outline shows the um, all the different pieces that come together through uh, collaboration on enforcement, education, and evaluation. Um, and all of that is designed to deliver an effective campaign that changes uh, behaviors of drivers and pedestrians. The f uh, I'm, I'm just going to walk through uh, each, each of these components, education, the enforcement and evaluation, and I thought I'd start with education. Um, here are the different pieces that we're looking to string together through collaboration with you. We started with um, reaching out to each of you to explain the campaign strategy and, and start um, asking you to, to gather a list of partners to help out. Uh, so. I wanted to make sure that everybody's on track with that list, and, and I encourage you to keep building on that list. Um, the next piece was the creative messages. And you can see here there are five core messages to the campaign that we developed with, uh, with input from you and others on making sure that we're delivering the right tone and, and the right kind of um, visual aesthetic that will capture a, a, a viewing audience. So we wanted to um, thank you for that, but also we've printed these in a variety of different um, shapes and sizes, and they're, they're sent out to each of the partners 
Um, I wanted to make sure that everybody has received those and clear on how to distribute them. So uh, this is sort of an interactive session. I wanted to see if anybody has any questions or issues that have come up with the uh, delivery of the printed materials. Is everyone okay with um, what they've received so far? Okay. Um, so the next piece was the uh, local press events. We've encouraged everyone to try to get, um, organize a local kickoff where you gather some local press and um, build steam for the effort in March. Uh, if you, it's not a requirement, and if you haven't started it yet, you, you can still um, start to prepare something, and, and we're more than willing to help uh, offer some guidance on how to do that. So I wanted to also provide an opportunity here if anybody has any questions about uh, getting a local press event together or what might what that might look like. Um, I encourage you to uh, ask me now or, or follow up later. How many people on the line right now are doing a local press event? Tom's River is. We're going to be doing ours on the 18th. Great. Could you tell us a little bit about what you're doing? Well, I'll be going on the local radio station. They have uh, four uh, sister stations. They'll be kicking it off on that, as well as our social media and the town site, the town's uh, social media website. If there was an event, I Great, thank you. I, I do want to mention, um, the highest as well, that there was a kickoff in Metuchen on Friday. Uh, we had a regional kickoff yesterday, and that there will be a kickoff in Woodbridge on Friday. Okay. Any other events being planned right now? Okay, well, um, if you do decide to try to pull something together, it's, uh, like I said, it's not too late. We just had our, our regional kickoff yesterday, and um, throughout the the month of March, we're going to be having the street teams come out on, on a different schedule for each community. So you can try to align something with the first outing for each, for those street teams. Um, but if you have any questions, just feel free to reach out to me. I'm happy to help guide you through that. Um, so you know that leads into the the outreach training webinar. Um, so street teams were scheduled to go out and and educate motorists and pedestrians about their roles and responsibilities for, um, for safety. And we're visiting each of the target locations in each community. Um, did everyone see the schedule? Is everybody aware of when their street teams are, are due to arrive? And also I wanted to give you a chance to um, talk about the volunteers, if you were able to gather any volunteers and if you're clear on how to um, solicit their support and how they can help. Does anybody have any questions about volunteers for street teams? Okay. Well, we have we do have a uh, a webinar, a training webinar for anybody that does volunteer. And if you want to help support either the street teams that are due to arrive in your campaign or if you wanted to uh, organize your own teams to go out at different locations at different times throughout the month, uh, you're welcome to do so. Just encourage you again to view that webinar and uh, follow up with me if you have any other questions about it. So um, another key piece of the campaign is the enforcement. Uh, we've started with each community with a, a crash data analysis and trying to identify locations in each community that are best suited for the outreach and targeted enforcement. Um, the campaign calls for the targeted enforcement at these locations. We tried to identify the most dangerous intersections. And um, there's some feedback going on. Could you please mute the phone? Thank you. So, I just wanted to see if everybody was able to uh, coordinate the law enforcement here and um, 
if there are any questions on, on how to, uh, to coordinate that. Okay. Uh, again, let me know if you have any uh, issues setting up enforcement detail, and I'll be happy to help you out. So that brings us to the evaluation piece, um, and this is going to be a major focus for the rest of this webinar. Um, as you know, the, the, the goal here is changing behavior, and the way we do that is through measuring different um, pieces of the campaign. Um, we're looking at behaviors first and foremost, the drivers, we're looking at their, um, their speed, the failure to yield to pedestrians in the crosswalk, and we're also looking at pedestrian behaviors for using the crosswalk and waiting for the walk signal. Um, this campaign is in phase two. We've also started looking at the, uh, for both drivers and pedestrians, uh, inattention, and a lot of that is, um, in, in recent years is attributed to use of mobile devices, people looking down while they're walking or, or even worse, while they're driving. So um, those are some of the things that we're going to be looking for in our observational studies. Um, there are eight locations that we're looking at pre and post uh, throughout the, the region. Um, and we're also going to be having an awareness survey that goes out pre and post campaign. Um, the enforcement detail is going to be looking at the, uh, whether it's pedestrians, uh, the pedestrian decoy, cops in the crosswalks, or roving patrols. We're looking to get their reports on and measure the number of interactions and citations and warnings that are issued. Um, but the key focus for you as community partners is to understand the uh, the Community Evaluation Toolkit, which we're going to do a live walkthrough here. Uh, this is basically just a, a nice new form that we've developed for Phase 2. It helps you track um, your local activities uh, to be aware ahead of time of what you're going to be tracking and really just to simplify the reporting process. Um, here's just a screenshot of the form itself. and I'd like to um, now share the screen with, or um, assign the screen to Alec and Samantha as they're going to be giving us a live demo of how it works. This is going to be issued later today, so I wanted to um, give everyone a first look at it, and if you have any questions following that, uh, you can feel free to contact me. Alec, are you able to um, use the screen? Um, I think, hold on a second, um, I should be sharing my screen, so let me open the form really quick. Okay. And then I will share the screen with you. Okay. Okay. If you have any problems, I have it ready to go here, too, so just let me know. I should also mention why you're setting up that the form is also going to be available as a paper form if anybody has trouble using it online. Online is much preferable, but if, um, for example, it doesn't run on Mac system, so if, if you're having trouble with it or, you know, it's just not working for you, you can certainly also just do the paper form, scan them, or fax them. Um, I guess, are they coming to us, Keith, or are they going to Eureka Fax? I believe they go to Eureka. Okay. But um, for future use, they should come to NJTPA right. as well. Right. And this is a form that we're looking to use. Um, and I'm sorry, this is Lois Goldman from NJTPA. I'm a little bit late to the meeting. Do we have any TMAs on the line? Yes, yes. Tam. Great. Um, something we're going to be using going forward for when the TMAs are also our campus. So, um, okay, I'm just trying to figure out how I can share my screen at this point. Yeah. 
Alec, up at the top of the um, in the menu bar, there's an option for share. So when you, you uh, click on that drop-down window, you, it just, you can just click on the My Screen option. Or share my screen. Simple enough. Yeah, me go to. I don't have a car though. Okay. Great. I'm I have money it. though today. I say it. <laughs> but no car. Okay. Um, All right. On to the fun You guys can see my screen, right? Oh, no, not at the moment. No? Yep. Okay. I see. I see your screen. Okay. The one? I'm getting a lot of beeping All right. going. All right. Whenever you, yeah, come pick me up and then uh, call me when you're here. Okay. Thanks. All right. Bye. Okay. Um, Great. Great. We good? Okay. So the first thing you'll see is you know, once you open it the first time, you, this cell. Uh, first thing you'll probably need to do is enable content. Uh, this reporting system uses Excel or VBA macros. I want to assure everybody that they are secure. There's no viruses in those macros. We are IRS, FISMA, moderate facility, so we are not spreading uh, viruses around the world. Uh, so you'll be safe and secure to enable the content. This will allow you to enter the data, okay? Do you want to make this a trusted document? Sure, it is a trusted document. So the first thing you do is to click to add activity data and you get this little screen popping up. So the first thing you want to do is, and we'll send you um, a user manual, so a lot of things I'll be talking about will be described there as well as we'll explain what is the activity, because that's kind of important for records keeping. Basically, we define an activity as either kind of a distinct effort, okay? Like one thing you do on a particular day or among several days. For instance, you might want to attend a neighborhood fair which lasts over a weekend. So that will be a multi-day activity, but it's still kind of one set of effort. So we can start with a bigger date, and today is the 9th, so we'll pretend it's all today. And let's say you are, sake of this example, let's say you are going into the community and distributing some material. <laughs> and you enter a year. Now, if you're doing this for two days, you would put in the end date. You don't have to do it if that activity is just a single day activity. So you put in your name. I'm Alex, and you, you know, put in your email. This is just so we know who is entering these things. Oh, what am I doing? Okay. And the next, the more important thing is to, you know, the next thing you put in is a type of activity. And we have several types of activity we categorize them. Uh, capacity building, just briefly, and again, it will be described in your uh, manual. Capacity building are things you're doing internally to strengthen your ability to implement this program. So these two things will be like training, so outreach to other community partners or outreach to the media, you know, calling reporters, telling them you're having a press event. Uh, we have enforcement activities, uh, which are kind of been already described. This are uh, targeting specific areas, which were pre-identified. Media advocacy, those are activities dealing with the media. That's getting coverage for your activities or for the issue. Um, you know, presentation dissemination activities, those are any type of outreach activities to the community to give them messages about being safer while driving or walking. And we have social media activities, those are using your social media property properties to disseminate the message. So let's go on to the presentation dissemination. Um, and these things are kind of linked. So if you 
click on presentation dissemination as a type of activity, you will have a menu for the possible type of presentation and dissemination activities. Um, so, and from there you can select what you're actually doing. Let's say you are distributing uh, cards or some kind of a material, so there will be uh, a distribution of, um, activity. Which, what we ask you to do next is select the primary and secondary target audience. And let me give you one thing, you know, we want you to be creative. So if there is a type of activity you're doing here, is, you know, you're doing which is not on the list, feel free just to type in the type of activity, we'll capture it. Okay? So, and again, the manual will describe in a painful detail how you should select your primary target audience. In the neighborhood, and let's say, you know, you're going to specific intersections in distributing information cards, you know, your primary target audience will probably be just general, okay? Because you'll get kids, you'll get adults, you'll get teenagers, you'll get people of different race and ethnicities, so on and so forth. So, you know, you might want to in general, but let's say you decided to go to a Puerto Rican Day Festival in your community. You're probably doing this because you're targeting um, a child you know, on outreach to a Hispanic community, then you might pick a more specific uh, population in this case. So in this case, we'll say it'll be general because we just want to illustrate how this works. Uh, secondary target audience, again, this is an optional field, you might want to do this if, let's say, you are doing an outreach on elderly African American population. You know, you know that this is who you're reaching at this point, so you might pick African American as a secondary audience. You might pick, you know, people over 65 because that is really who you focusing that activity on. Our uh, community served. This is a list of your, of all our partners. So you just pick appropriate one. And we'll go, I was actually passing through Elizabeth yesterday at the trains in New York. So we'll pick Elizabeth. And finally, uh, if it's applicable, uh, pick the location of the community. Uh, try to go with uh, the most broad, uh, Categorization. So this say this is a public location, so street, park, so on and so forth. The next thing is the output measure. What we want to find out is how do you measure the effectiveness or the reach of your um, of your activity? Um, depending upon the type of activity you pick. Hello type of category you pick, you generally will have something relating to, say, since you're distributing no, uh, material, there will be a number of flyers, a number of cards, a number of materials you actually distributed during your event. Okay. okay. So, you know, you manage to okay. give out flyers. Uh -huh. Okay, bye. And you just put that number right there. That gives us an idea of how many people you are reaching at this point. Sometimes you might have, let's say, you're doing a presentation to a community group, okay? And just to give you an example, so you are talking to, doing a presentation. Where's my presentation? Um, so, it's, and you say you have 50 people in a, you know, homeowners association attending that meeting, so you will put 50 attending the thing, but you're also giving out flyers because it's always the best thing to do for them to take something away. And you might select a number of, where's the puppy? Number of flyers given out and, you know, you might have a stack there, and after the presentation, you know, you had a stack of 100, and nine of them were taken. 
taking away so you know that you distribute about 90 flyers at the same time. So you just put 90 as your secondary auto measure. And you, you know, feel free to put any kind of comments you might want, you know, to clarify what you were doing or to give yourself a reminder or anything else. So with a smashing success. And click on this add activity button. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, if it's a one day activity, so just put the same date as the. Um, thank you, Max. Max is sitting here, is actually one of the developers who helped to program this, but we decided. And we are at this point done. You say, okay. You have another activity to enter, you know, doing this on the same day. You just push clear and thing clears out. You're free to enter anything else. And once you're done, you can close the window. And, and it's already is in the data set. So if you look at the data set, Here's our little activity we just entered. And every time you enter data, data set will be populated with new entries and there will be a running oh, track. Huh? They have a lot of land there. Yeah, What's the problem? I'm going to check the setback. I'm sorry, um, could we please mute the phone if you're not speaking and participating? It's different than residents. Okay. Which way are they going to come out? So it's this way? Sorry. Excuse me, I don't think you realize it, but we can hear all your comments. Yeah. So please mute your phone. No, there's tons of grass. There's tons of grass there. No. Okay. Um, so there's grass. <laughs> there's a lot of grass there. Stuff doesn't even go near. Allison. <laughs> Yes. I, I I think there's some noise going on. I'm um, so sorry. I apologize. I keep being mute, but I think it's so I can't hear you. Oh. All right. <laughs> I could mute you from here if you want. Yeah, do that. <laughs> all right. Thank, Thank you. you. All right. Okay. Well, we're also, I mean, the process, again, we'll, um, we will tell you where to send it, but, you know, during the campaign period, you'll be sending, you'll be saving these, um, this file, this workbook, and just sending it to us with Eureka Facts, and we'll be capturing the data and do the things we do with it. Uh, again, for our evaluation purposes, when you do evaluation of behavior change uh, interventions or campaigns, What's important to do is to relate what is happening, how the campaign is being implemented to the outcome measures. So this is what we call a part of process evaluation. So by knowing what is going on, we can diagnose, you know, how on the ground as well as, you know, broader uh, media activities uh, are affecting the outcome, such as people you know, changing their behavior, being more aware of pedestrian safety, thinking that pedestrian safety is an important issue, and other types of things. So we need this during the campaign period. Uh, however, it's a relatively useful tool for community partners beyond the campaign implementation. So, for instance, you might want to look at the mix of services, you know, mix of activities you've been conducting during the last month or seeing which populations you were reaching. Mm. And, you know, how's your media advocacy going? So we added a pretty simple, um, you know, of course the folks who are really geeky about data can analyze it any way they want it, but folks who are just want to, want to take a quick look at what's going on, we added a little reporting tool, and it's very simple. So what you do here, let's say you want to do, you want to know what you did during the last month. So you put in the start date, which is 3 on 16, and you put the end month and say, we're looking in the future here. I'm, oh, I'm sorry, this is a month thing. Okay, so it's still going here. Here we're going to 31st. 
31 days in March. You can do, you can filter by the type of activity, you can filter by specific activities, and you can filter by your primary and secondary target audiences. So, so there's only, okay. So we know that there's only one type of activity Yeah, okay, so we're looking at presentation dissemination activities. Yeah, there's only one data point there, so if we filter by that, you'll get a little report. This is all, everything that's been done during that month for that, you know, in this database. But once you get more things populated there, you can do more, you know, more specific filtering, and you will get, for instance, all your um, you know, flyer and kind of material distribution activities in one little report. Okay? Do you guys have any questions? Alex, this is Keith. I have uh, one immediate question. So for each user of, of this toolkit, and when they use this filter, are they um, filtering results from the campaign, um, you know, program-wide or just what they've entered in, in the past, uh, um, you know, in their past entries? Just what they entered in the past. So this, you know, this filter will be specific to each location, to each community. Okay. And once they've hit close window, it, does that automatically enter it into your database? No, it has to be not. No, it enters, it enters into the data, in their database. And then what they, we're asking them to do is to send us a copy of the worksheet data off and a little bit more of advanced statistical software. We can pull it out. I'm sorry, Alex, oh, this is Lois. I would ask our partners if we could submit that every week, like maybe every Monday or Friday, um, and CC us at NJTPA just so that we know what's being submitted. Um, that would be really great. Okay. Um, probably Mondays are always good if you have, like, weekend activities and you already entered them. Uh, remember, everything is filtered by the date. So once we get the stuff, you know, we'll have internal processes where we'll make sure that we catch, you know, picking up unique observations and putting them in our database. Okay? Okay, good. I just, I also wanted to um, point out that there's an accompanying uh, guidance sheet for using the form. Um, so that clarifies a little bit more about what Alice was talking about with uh, determining which type of activity is the appropriate entry, um, you know, just really walking through the uh, the decision making process for um, how to enter the data. I'm okay, sending that out today as well. Yeah, and there's also a paper form for the people who will not be able to use, you know. Use the online. I mean, not a, it's not an online form. It's basically an Excel form. It's res, it will be residing in on your machine. So it's not you know, it's not an online tool. It's actually kind of a book tool. Um, so those things will also be available. And up to Keith, you can send it also. Send the paper forms to us. So if you. Better yet, if you can scan them and send us a scan, that would be great, too. Okay. But, uh, you know, as long as you have window, this is optimized, as long as you have Windows 7 or above, and XP is no longer supported, and you have, I think, two or three versions of Excel, it should work on your machine. Okay? Unfortunately, it does not work on Macs, because Macs just really strange in how they deal with macros. Um, I will stop sharing my screen. <laughs> okay. Does anyone else have any other questions about the form? Okay. okay well, you can always, uh, 
the information, the manual which Keith and I mentioned, uh, which will be sent to you, does have our contact information. So if you run into a problem, just let us know. We'll get back to you. Okay. All right. Thank you, Alex. There. So. Oh. Um, thanks again. Uh, this is a uh, this was a, a useful session, I think, and it will be available online. Um, does anybody else have any questions before we be close out? Okay. Thank you for participating, and uh, we'll be in contact Sorry. throughout the month. Was there a question? Oh, hi. Hi, Keith. This is Jack Nash. I'm sorry. I, 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 I missed the – I just came on. So will, will you – are you going to have – are you going to post this so we can, uh, we can uh, view it after the fact? Yes, I will be posting it today. I'm going to send out the evaluation toolkit along with the manual, and okay. I'll send you a link to the recording. Okay, perfect. Thank you very much. All right. Thanks, Thank Jack. Thank you, Jack. Bye-bye right. now. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Okay. Thanks again, everyone.